All right, hello again. So in the last video, we talked through how to interpret indifference curves, right? What we said is essentially that when you have an indifference curve, it's going to separate everything that's better from everything that's worse, right? So from the perspective of a point on one particular curve, we know that everything up here is better than all the points in that curve. Everything down here is worse than all the points in that curve. Everything on this curve is just as good as everything else, right? And we said that instead of just being able to draw a single indifference curve, we can draw as many as we want, right? We can draw an indifference curve through every single point because our preferences are complete and we're always going to be able to compare one point to any other point. So what we're going to do now is we're going to think about how to take this graphical intuition and use it to do some math. Right? Use it to start building some equations. And the way that I'm going to do this is very simple. I'm going to say, we know that everything on this curve is worse than everything on this curve. Everything on this curve is worse than everything on that curve. Everything on this curve is worse than everything on that curve. Right? This makes sense. We're, we're basically going from worse to better as we're moving in this direction. So all I'm going to do is to keep track of all these different curves I'm going to number them, right? I'm going to say this is curve 1, this is curve 2, this is curve 3, this is curve 4. And then I'm going to say higher number curves, better than lower number curves. Are preferred to lower curves. Right? All I've done I've taken what we already knew from the graph. I've just labeled the curves so we can keep track of them a little better. Now, something I want to point out there, though, is you know we've labeled these four curves. Wait, we drew those through those four curves. I could draw another curve here. Have to give that one a label too. I'll call that one one half, right? Because it's lower than one. Got to put a curve here, right? I'll call that one five. Put a curve here. Call that one three and a half. Right? We're still going to be just fine adding all of these curves as long as we preserve the order, right? As long as lower curves have lower numbers than higher curves. Well, what I just did by labeling these curves is I've now given you something where for any point you pick, right, I'll call this point A, I'll call this point B, I've numbered that point, right? I've said that point A is number 3, point B has a number 3.5. And if the number for point B is higher than the number for point A, I prefer point B to point A. So I'm going to call these numbers the number on each indifference curve its utility. Why am I going to call it utility? Because utility is a weird word that we don't use for anything else. It's a word that comes out from 18th century English philosophy. And essentially all we want to do is we want to say, you've got a higher utility, I'm going to pick you over something with a lower utility. I'm going to call it utility and not well-being or happiness or something like that. Because I don't really know why you prefer one thing to another, I just know that you do. So the rule is going to be, if you have a utility associated with a particular point that is greater than the utility associated with some other point, then point A is preferred to point B. Right? That's what we're saying here. We're saying if the number associated with point, B, point A is higher than the number associated with point B, in this case, right, number with point B is, is higher than the number with point A, then, a is, then B is preferred A. Right? Cool. OK. Now what I did here, right, when I wrote U in the parentheses A, is I said your utility value is going to be a function of the choice, right? This is writing like a function. What other functions do we have, right? If we write f of x, exact same terminology. And what we mean when we say f of x 
is that you give me an X, I'll give you a Y. Right? It's a machine that given an input spits out some output. So I'm going to define a utility function, a function of my choices that gives me a utility function. Utility function Right? U of X equals little u tells me which indifference curve, the number of the indifference curve the indifference curve that choice X is on. Right? So U of A is going to be 3 because point A is on a difference curve 3. U of B is going to be 3.5 because B is on a difference curve 3.5. Right? If I have C, U of C is going to be 2 because C is on a difference curve 2. Right? U of A is 3. U of B is 3.5. U of C is 2. Right? So this is a utility function. Even though we haven't really used any math, right? We're not saying that this is the square root of, of you know, the, the number of, of hours of friends times the number of hours of TV, anything like that. All we're doing is we're saying, you tell me the number of hours spent on each of those activities. I can tell you a number, and then I can use those numbers to tell you what I prefer to something else, right? The point of these numbers, all that these numbers do is they tell me because the number associated with B is higher than the number associated with A, I like B better than A. Because the number associated with A is higher than the number associated with C, I like A better than C. That's all we're doing. Okay, so given that, I want to mess with this a little bit. Right, because as I kept adding lines to this graph, it got really messy, it got kind of hard to keep track of. And I end up with, you know, I don't like having fractions. I don't like having one half and one and two and three, three point five, all that. So now that I've got these new, new lines on the graph, I'm going to relabel my utility, my difference curve. Right? I'm going to call this one 1, call this one 2, this one 3, this one 4, this one 5, this one 6, this one 7. Right? Am I allowed to do this? I just changed all these numbers. Well, sure, right? The only reason that this was 2 before was because that's how I happened to do it. It was totally arbitrary. It was totally up to my whim. Right? This whimsical decision is just as good as the other whimsical decision. So if I've got my new blue utility function, I say u tilde, u tilde of a is now going to equal 4, u tilde of b is going to equal 5, and u tilde of c is going to equal 3. Right? Have I changed anything? Does this blue utility function represent the same preferences as the black utility function? The answer is yes. Even though the numbers are different, all I cared about was the numbers relative to each other, right? All I care about is whether you're in a higher indifference curve or a lower indifference curve. So because 5 is higher than 4, just like 3.5 was higher than 3, I still know that B is preferred to A. Because 4 is higher than 3, I know that A is preferred to C, right? All that changed is I picked a different arbitrary utility function. So when I say that somebody's preferences are represented by some utility function, there's nothing special about the numbers that come out of that function, right? All those numbers are are labels. All those numbers are are ranks that tell me better and worse, higher and lower. So if I wanted to, I could really go crazy with this. Instead of labeling these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I could label these 1, 6,372, 6,373, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,000, 9,000,
And this red utility function has exactly the same information as the blue function and the black function, right? Even though I go from 1 to 6,372 instead of from 1 to 2, all that tells me is this indifference curve is better than that indifference curve. It doesn't tell me any other information, right? 9 million to 9 million and 1, higher and lower. That is the only information that a utility function contains. So I'm going to have a rule of utility functions that the actual numbers, numbers mean nothing. All that matters is the order. All that matters is higher or lower. Okay, so given that, I want you to think about something for a second. Let's say that my utility in terms of the number of frames f and the amount of tv times t, right, equals u, this is my function. Let's say that my utility of five hours with friends and five hours of tv is five, and my utility of five hours with friends and six hours of tv is 9,000. Can we say that the sixth hour of TV is worth more to me than the previous five hours of TV and five hours of friends. The fact that we have this leap to 9,000, tell me anything about how much I value that sixth hour of TV relative to the previous five hours of TV. I want you to think about that for a second. Okay. All that this tells us is that getting that sixth hour was better than not having. Five, six is preferred to five, five. We don't learn anything at all about how much we care about that sixth hour of TV, only that we liked it. And the reason is, these numbers are arbitrary. We don't know that there's a bigger change from zero to five than from five to 9,000. That's purely about how we label our indifference curves. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna say about utility functions. This is all that a utility function is, is a way of ranking indifference curves from worst to best, where higher numbers mean that you prefer something over other things, right? That's all that utility functions do. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how we're gonna to try to get at this problem that we couldn't solve using utility functions alone which is how to know how much we value one thing relative to something else. And we're going to do that using a tool called the marginal rate of substitution. Okay.